So after a long wait of 6 months, they released the first DLC, They Shall Not Pass. And today we will be looking at a weapon that has been released with this DLC, named the Shashant. I believe it is a very very powerful weapon, if not the best. First off I'd like to talk about some of the history of the Shashant machine gun. So it was in service from 1908 to 1945. The design of the Shashant machine rifle was one of the first light automatic rifle caliber machine gun weapons. It was designed to be carried and fired by a single operator and an assistant roughly, or without. So without a heavy tripod or a team of gunners, it was a predecessor of several 20th century firearm projects. So it was portable, it was combined with a pistol grip, it was a manageable weight of 20 pounds for a single soldier. So. That's in comparison to rifles that were 60 pounds, plus ammo, plus the ammo bag, and the crate itself, let alone the bipod. So the muddy trenches of northern France exposed a number of weaknesses in the Chachon's design. So the construction had been simplified to facilitate mass production. So, meaning, they put a little less effort in the design of this weapon for the war. I believe 262,000 roughly of these were made and it fought in several several wars so it had a 19 inch barrel the length of the weapon in total was about 45 inches so it was, it was a it was a long rifle the magazines in particular were caused about 75 percent of the stoppages or the ceases of fire they were made of thin metal and were open to one side this allowed for mud dust and all other kind of grimes to get inside this rifle and this isn't a very good design because in World War I the trenches were muddy, living conditions were horrible, there was mass amounts of bush, forest, there was tons of terrain that these guys had to fight on, let alone if this weapon made its way into the uh, eastern front, that means that now this thin metal is in contact with colder weather. So it was a gas operated rifle. It was mass manufactured to be reconverted to civilian plants, Gladiator and Sidearm, so they made also the LaBelle sniper rifle. The Belgian military did not experience difficulties with the Shawshanks in the 7.65 Mauser, and it kept them in service till the early 1930s. Controversially, the Shawshanks version in US, so the 30-06 which was made by Gladiator, the Model 1918 provided a fundamentally defective and had to be withdrawn from service. So there was more than one design of these weapons. One was made for the US, one was made obviously for the French, and the design and weapons were different calibers, different lengths of barrels. So when they made these designs, one was obviously greater than the other. One was withdrawn from service because of its defectiveness with its caliber and for the mud and grime that was getting in the clips, causing for the weapon to jam. This weapon, since it was made with thin metal and fast reproduction, the weapon had a very hard time staying cool. There was a few ceasefires recorded saying that the weapon got so hot it would not allow a shell to go into the length of the barrel. So they also had to wait for the weapon to cool down for it to obviously contract and allow it to shoot again. Today we will be looking at two variations of the weapon, the telescopic and the low weight and the differences between them and how they perform set. I would like to start off with the Shashant low weight variation. So its damage points max is 35 and it goes down to 23. So that's not too bad if you're thinking of damage per shot with the low magazine. So it equalizes itself out with how much damage it does for how many bullets it has. It also has a slow fire rate of 359 rounds per minute so that's a very controllable fire rate where it's not out of hand but it's not too fast not too slow so i believe that you can win multiple firefights if you have the accuracy to compete with the people you're with it also has a very quick muzzle velocity for most battlefield one weapons which is about 720 meters per second with a bullet drop of 12 meters per second so if that was a real life this would be a laser weapon but it is not so this weapon is a game for Battlefield. So the time to kill goes anywhere from 12 to 31 milliseconds, which is extremely quick in the 
broad aspects of human reaction. But in gaming time, that's um, a pretty decent time to kill. So it could go from anywhere if you get a headshot and a body shot to extremely quick to a few lag shots that could take mm, a couple bullets because of the spread increase of this weapon. So with this weapon, it is fairly accurate if you burst it, but I believe from my experience, when I shoot one bullet at a time at distant objects, with my accuracy that is pretty decent, I'm not one of the best players, but I'm not one of the worst players, I believe tapping one bullet at a time it is a very accurate rifle. And I have competition with the bar and other weapons like the MG15. So this is a very decent weapon. The spread increase is very low. It's about 0.1. So there is a different prospect with ADS of moving and not moving. So it's about 0.24 when you're not moving. But when you are moving, that increases about 200% so it doubles so I would recommend to not move while shooting this weapon because then your accuracy would extremely decrease meaning that you could have a very good weapon to a weapon that is not very good so I would recommend that you would choose this weapon and I will be talking about the telescopic weapon next with the telescopic version there isn't much changes in the weapons overall damage potential or your reload times from 2.9 seconds to 3.6 seconds, so, so that's shortest to longest. But there's a difference in spread. So your increase is greater on the low weight version and is lesser on the telescopic version, meaning that you will have better accuracy over time with the telescopic version. Your hip fire and ADS is a little bit different. The multiplier is plus one with the telescopic, meaning it's a little different but the decrease over time is about half the percent of the low weight. So the telescopic's got a decrease of five, while the low weight's got a decrease of 12, meaning that one has greater accuracy than the other, because the decrease is greater over time than the other one. So they're, all they're doing in balancing this one is they added a scope with one, but gave the decrease a lesser amount, so that you're not a laser rifle. But the one with iron sights, the low weight version, also has its pros and cons versus the telescopic version, meaning that your decrease takes longer to achieve, your ADS is a little better, and, well, your hip fire and whatnot are also a little better for close quarter engagements, while the other one is designed for long distance engagements, but at the same time, they balance it so it's not a laser rifle. And I believe that both of these weapons can compete with the next available weapons in Battlefield 1, such as the BAR, the MG15, so on and so forth. I believe this weapon would be, in my opinion, the best weapon to choose from if you have the accuracy to support it in Battlefield 1 with the support class. To wrap up my video, I'd like to say that I believe that this is the best support weapon that you can choose from right now with the damage potential that this thing outputs. And with that in mind, I'd like to end the video off with that. I believe that if you have the accuracy to support this weapon, you should use it because I believe it is the best damaging weapon in the support class. And well, that's all for my video today guys, and hit that like button.